Hey guys, we're going to set up one last thing and that is ESLint. This is something I can't start a project without adding. It is wonderful. If you've never heard of it, what it is is it is a tool that you can add to your editor or run it on your code. And what it does is it tells you places where your style or you're making errors. For example, this is what it looks like in Visual Studio Code with the ESLint plugin. So you see this little red line on our code. And then it says, hey, you should use single quotes here because that's what your style guide recommends. So it makes you follow a certain style with your code and tells you where you can improve your code in places. And it's really nice. So let's add that to this project. Now, I've already added it here, but I'll show you how I did it. So the first thing is to uh, install ESLint globally. To do this, go ahead and type npm i g ESLint. So what that does is installs this ESLint package globally. And uh, if you don't know what this I is, that's short case for install. So run that and you should get a ESLint utility um, on the command line. So now you can run ESLint-V, get the version. I'm using 4.14, but I would just use the latest version that is uh, currently out when you're watching this video. And then we're just gonna run ESLint init. And go ahead and run this in the directory of your project. So stack calculator is my project. And when I run ESLint init, it's going to ask me a few questions. Now, these are all preference. So my preference is to use a popular style guide, uh, notably Airbnb. And now we're using React, so we'll say yes. And then you go ahead and select the format you want your configuration file in. I prefer JavaScript, but again, this is up to you guys' preference. And once you hit enter, it'll go ahead and install ESLint and all the things it needs for Airbnb ESLint. Now, funny enough, it does not do actually install ESLint itself. So we're gonna have to install that as well with a dev dependency. And we're also gonna be installing Babel ESLint, um, which I'll explain in just a second. So again, and I'm doing dash dash save dev here uh, to save these as developer dependencies. So I ran all that, installed that, all that jazz. So now what I have is a .eslint rc file here, and it should look like this for you. Now if you picked a different either JSON or YAML um, output file, it might look a little different, but you should have extends Airbnb somewhere. Um, and then in your package.json, you should see a number of a package is added to dev dependencies. So Babel ESLint, ESLint we added, and then these right here, ESLint added for us. Um, and that's needed for Airbnb. Okay, so we're gonna add one last thing to our configuration file, uh, one setting that I was talking to you guys about, and that is a parser, Babel ESLint. If you don't know what Babel is, um, that is something that lets you use experimental or new JavaScript syntax that's really nice. An example of that is a sync and await and a spread operator. Uh, if you've ever seen people do uh, like A uh, or dot 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 B, that's called the spread operator, the triple dots. The way they're able to do that is if they're using Babel. So ESLint doesn't always understand all these new syntax, so we need to use the Babel ESLint parser here that way ESLint doesn't throw weird errors everywhere. Okay, so when we save that and run that, if you have ESLint plugin uh, for your editor, you should see red lines starting to pop up here because we're currently not following the Airbnb style guide here. Now, quick note, I'm using the ESLint one for Visual Studio Code, and I'm also using another plugin here called Prettier. Um, this is something I would recommend getting as well. It's not just for Visual Studio Code, lots of editors have it. What Prettier does, and you'll notice this, uh, in a second here I'm gonna save this file. So I could go in here manually and save, or change strings must use single quotes, but that's kind of tedious. What Prettier does is it actually styles the code and goes ahead and uh, fixes my ESLint warnings, at least the ones that it can fix. For example, here a comma is dangling, uh, which means there needs to be a comma here. It knows how the error goes away. But as soon as I hit save on this file, all these errors are gonna disappear. So here, that's me just hitting save. It takes a second to run 
and configure. Sometimes I've noticed it actually doesn't run at all. If that's, and it looks like that's the case here. You can actually have it manually happen by bringing up the command palette and running format document. And you'll notice how some of the errors went away, the comma appeared, and I have quotation marks um, appeared. Now this error it couldn't fix, which is fine, but I would recommend getting prettier if you don't have it. You'll notice my code kind of shifting around all of a sudden when I save. Uh, that's because of prettier and uh, yeah, styles it for me. Now I also have a setting on that uh, right here. So format on save um, with my editor, that's how prettier gets run when I save it. And then this ESLint integration, after prettier runs, it also pump it through ESLint. That way it, it follows all the ESLint rules. So I'd recommend that if you're using Visual Studio Code or if there's a similar uh, setting for your plugin for your IDE or editor. Okay, so we got rid of that warning here. And now we'll see all kinds of different warnings as we're coding now, which is nice. And this particular one, it says component should be written as a peer function. So you might be asking yourself, what is a peer function? So right now we have a component. Uh, this is a class and it's a component because we're extending react.component. Now there's other ways to write components. Components can just be functions. So what we can do is we can take the return, this render function, uh, and just make it a uh, function. So for example, I can delete class up here. And instead of render, I can call this thing, I can just say const, and I can say app is equal to a function. So now we're exporting default um, this app, but you'll notice we're gonna have a little error here. We can see it, unexpected token. The reason for that is because you can't export default a const app. You can only export it, or what you can do is say uh, export default, and I'm just gonna bring that to the bottom here. Uh, export default app in a different line. Now you notice it's getting mad at me. Um, JSX not allowed in file name. So we call this app.js. So one way to get rid of this is I could say app.jsx. Give that a save and that got rid of that one. Um, styles was not defined above. So we can move styles up here. Give that a save. And what else are we doing wrong? Unexpected block surrounding arrow. Um, so we're returning here. I don't think there's any other syntactical errors we're making. Missing semicolon, new line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and format the document. Give that a save and cool. So now it's all formatted. We're following all the ESLint guidelines and uh, the app will work exactly the same as it was with the class before, but now it's a function. Uh, so you may be wondering why you would want to use a function like this instead of a class. My recommendation to you if you don't know the differences right now is always use a function until you need a class. Uh, there's this thing called state which we'll probably talk about later which you can't use in functions and also there's some special methods that you can use in classes which you cannot use in functions. But that's it for this video guys. We set up ESLint. Um, which is really nice. So now we're gonna get warnings and we can fix our code and make it look nice as we're coding stuff. So when we run it, it will work, hopefully. Now also I'm gonna put this code on GitHub because I'm starting to make changes to it so you guys can follow along and make sure uh, you guys have your config file, the same as mine, uh, and your package JSON in case you run into some errors. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you next time.